Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. What's beef? Do you even know what real beef is? Do you know what beef is when you can't get away from a situation? When I say beef, I mean you and other men or you and the next man having a problem. And they ain't trying to talk. It's escalated to the point now that they don't want to hear nothing you got to say. They want to take your life. They're set on taking your life. Like I said, do you really know what beef is? I've seen guys put themselves in situations where there is no running. There is no hiding. Can't get into your car, drive off into the night. Can't pack up all your belongings and just move to a new house and disconnect your phone. Could you imagine being in a situation where you know that when the cell door opens, the other man's cell door is going to open. And his intentions are to take you up out of here. What are you going to do? Today I got some crazy stories for y'all, man. I really hope that y'all listen. And I want to say this before we say anything else. I don't glorify being locked up. I don't think that if you went to prison, that makes you a tough guy. I don't think that being locked up in any way, shape, or form is any type of badge or trophy you should be pretending that you got. It just means that you got caught. It just means that you were doing things you shouldn't have been doing and not doing the things you should have been. So what's beef? <laughs> Y'all know I done seen it. Y'all know I done lived it. So let's relive it. So anytime you're locked up and you come to a decision that you're going to mess with drugs, you're going to sell drugs, you're going to deal with the dudes that deal with the drugs, the clock has started ticking until things ends bad. You know it always ends bad. At this particular time in my bed, I had a blood dude in the cell with me. Cool ass dude. Me and dude never had no problems. To this day, me and dude ain't got no problems. You know, was what it was. I've had cellies of, of every nature you could pretty much think about. Every gang, if it was active, I've had them in the cell with me. This dude comes in, he comes from upstairs, we're in the same building, he gets moved downstairs, he gets put in my cell. I'd seen him on the yard, he had some rank, you know what I mean, he had dudes under him, he wasn't somebody that started gangbanging in prison, He, I knew his whole story. He gangbanged in the streets, had been gangbanging since he was young, and he was getting money. A lot of y'all don't understand how much money is made inside the jails and the prisons when it comes to these drugs. Something that goes for 200, 250 in the streets and the prison system can make up to as much as $2,500. That's a fact. My celly was getting on, but he wasn't stupid. And he had been hustling for a long time. The boy had more money on his books than he knew what to do with. His people were sitting nice out on the streets. Him being in prison was like, it was almost like a meal ticket. But like I told y'all, he wasn't dumb. He didn't have nobody bringing the heroin to him. He didn't have nobody bringing the drugs to him. He would use select few guys to go over to the visitation room meet up with these females that they would meet for the first time in the visitation room. They bring it back. He'd break them off a small piece and then he'd sell the rest. That was his MO. That's how he stayed off the radar. And then he wouldn't even really sell it. He would distribute it to other gang members and dudes that hustled and stuff and have them go sell it, right? He would sit back like as the puppet master, he pulled all the strings. He made sure that his people on the outside took the drugs to the girls. He made sure 
the girls got it and came to the prison with it. He made sure he had somebody in the visitation room that wasn't linked to him. Go over there and get it. He made sure it made its way back. He made sure it got sold. He made sure he got paid. They got paid. Everybody was happy. <sighs> He's got this white dude. And this white dude is, to say the least, he's just a junkie. He just likes to get high. So when my celly goes to him with the proposition and tells him, hey, you don't really be getting no visits or nothing like that. I see you ain't really got no money. I know you get high. You know, I watch everything that goes on. I can help you with that. I can get it to where there's a girl coming up here to see you. You get visits. You going to bring something back for me. And I'm going to break you off decent and you can get high. You can do dope for free. All you got to do is go over there and get it and do what I tell you to do with it. This works. This has been working for, for my cellmate for a long time. That is what he does and he is damn good at it, right? Just so happens that the way visitation is set up is before you ever see your visitors, you come down this long hallway you go into this small room. They strip search you before you go in. Then you go into this little hallway. A door opens. And that opens up into the visitation room. When your visit ends. You go back into that little hallway. You wait. You go back in the same room. You get stripped. They search you. Then you go down that other long hallway. And go back to your building. What just so happens in that little hallway. You have to wait in. Before you go into where the officers are to search you when you're going back to your building. There's a couple spots in that hallway that are good Bama spots. You can hide stuff there. Not many people know about them. I'm not going to talk about the actual spots. There's just spots. And they've all, all this shit's been caught by now. But I'm not going to talk on exact locations. The dude goes over there and he's been doing this for months now. Like clockwork. Every weekend, every other weekend. He goes over there and he picks up. You know, a big old chunk of heroin. At this point, this was the only dude he was sending because this dude was, you know, smart about what he did. He was a white dude, so, you know, the guards wouldn't expect the black dude and the white dude to be working together. The girl comes in. She gives it to him. He gets in the hallway waiting to be searched by the guards. And there's like five or six dudes standing in this hallway. He thinks ain't nobody looking. Pulls it out of his pocket, puts it in the hiding spot. Now, what's going to happen is there's a man that works his job in the prison is to clean up the prison visitation room, mop the hallways, clean the area where you get searched, empty the trash. This guy is going to do that at the end of the day. And when he does, the guards that search, they've already left. Their only purpose was to search during visitation. Visitation's over. Everybody's been searched except for the guy that's cleaning and doing his job. They leave going about their business. This guy would then go over there to the hiding spot, get it out, put it in his pocket, and walk all the way back to the building with it. Not one time would he get patted down. Not one time would he get searched. So the original guy gets it from the girl. He hides it in the hallway. The other guy that cleans up comes behind him, scoops it up, brings it back to the building. Do breaks them off both, you know, because they both played a part. Everybody's happy. The heroin trade continues to go on, right? White dude goes over there one time, his last time, gets the pack. It's a whole bunch of dope, a lot of heroin. Probably cost a lot of money on the streets, but if I had to put a price on it for what it was worth in the prison system, it probably would have netted somewhere around $20,000. Just like clockwork. He has the visit with the girl, goes and waits in this little hallway to be searched. And like I told you, like five, six guys in this hallway, thanks to nobody looking, he hides it. Goes on through, gets searched, goes back to the building, tells dude, yeah, everything's straight. I put it where you told me to put it. End of the day comes, the hall guy goes over there, searching, can't find it. He's mopping, trying not to draw no attention. Cleaning, emptying the trash bags out and taking trash bags out of trash cans. Tying them in a knot to take them out to the loading dock. He's searching. It's not there. It is nowhere to be found. He's back from, from doing his job over the visitation room. He tells my cell, he says, pack wasn't there. 
This is what you mean the pack wasn't there. He's like, the pack was not there, man. It wasn't there. There's nothing there. I checked our hiding spots. It's not there. Hold up, man. Let me let me holler dude real quick. So he goes over, gets the white dude, calls the white dude over to the cell. He knows that this is the guy that brings it back after he hides it. White dude tells him, no, nah, this is exactly where I put it. It was there, right? They get into this big argument. So now you got my celly looking at both of these dudes like between one of the two of y'all, one of y'all took my shit. One of y'all know where my shit's at. I want my shit or there's going to be problems. There's going to be problems. That's all there is to it. And both of these guys get high. The guy that mops and, and cleans, he's a black dude. He gets high as well. Loves to get high from Richmond. Snorts the hell out that dope as much as he can get, right? So they're both prime suspects. A, because they're the only two people that know this is there. And B, because they both get high. So they both have something to gain. Not just money-wise, but getting high-wise. They both have something to gain when it comes to these drugs. We're in a cell that night, and dude's blood is boiling. We're locked down, and this is 530 count. All this other stuff that happened in the visitation room transpired that Saturday. This is now Sunday and almost 24 hours has passed. And my celly is in there and he is just pacing the cell back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I said, you all right, man? He was like, I don't know which one of them I need to stab. I think I need to stab both of them. And so I tried to talk some sense to do it. I said, hold up, man. You don't know that, you know, who did what? Like, you got to do some investigating. You know what I mean? You already know if you just keep watching that whatever's floating around here is going to come out. It ain't like everybody's got heroin. Whoever's got it, it's eventually going to have to come up off of it, sell it. Other dudes are going to get high. Like prison's one of the places you can plug your ears completely. But if you just open your eyes, you can see everything for what it is without ever hearing or saying a word. Just watch. He's not trying to hear me. Not at all. After count clears, him and a bunch of the other bloods, he goes down, calls a meeting, calls them in the cell, and they go in the white dude's cell, and there is no talking when they go in there. They're just going to go ahead and hurt both of these dudes real bad. This is what beef is. Beef is when, is when you're in a cell, and you got five, six dudes that come in there, and you're not built like that, and you're not prepared for it. And they're in there and they're they just going to do everything they can in their power to break everything in your body. They go in this white dude's cell and it was, it was messed up to have to sit back and hear. You couldn't see it because when they went in, they shut the door. And when you're done, you could push a button on the wall and the door would pop as long as inmates were allowed in and out their cells at this time, right? We could hear the dude screaming. You could hear the punching. You could hear the kicking and he is in that cell yelling and you hear people telling him shut up shut the fuck up shut up shut up i didn't know if they were stabbing him what they were doing i just knew that this dude had serious beef and they were in there hurting him right this stuff lasts for a couple minutes when they come out they leave the door open so that everybody else can see what they've done guards ain't paid no attention they ain't never caught wind of what's going on over in this cell what you would think as being a guard, that's your job is to keep people safe. It's part of what you sign up for, just like the police, right? To serve and protect. Guards never see anything. And I look over at the cell. And as dudes are coming out the cell, every single dude that's coming out that cell has got blood on them. Blood on their blue shirts, blood on their white shirts, blood all over the front of their jeans. And this dude is in the floor, sprawled out almost like if, if he was a fake dummy. Like, it didn't even look like a real person. They beat this boy within an inch of his life, right? I mean, just completely brutalized him, smashed him, had him unconscious, cracked him all up, broke bones. Short time later, this dude gets up off the floor. His celly didn't want no parts of it. His celly didn't go over there and help him. His celly was like, man, the hell with that. I'm not going over there. And they run back in there and think I got something to do with it. Mm -mm, I'm not going over there. Dude gets up, comes to the door, looks out, and we're looking at him. And he looks like Elephant Man. Like his face is just, it's shifted and broken. And there's just chunks and cuts and just knots. And he doesn't really resemble a human. He just didn't. He was like 
a mongoloid or something or something off Star Trek. Dude's face was just to pieces. By now, they've gone to the other dude's cell that mops and cleans up the black dude. And they've done the same exact thing. They went up the staircase, still had blood on them, had just done it to the one dude. They go up there. Dude is done come out of his cell and is walking down the tier trying to get away. And they're like, nah. The blood dudes go up the second set of staircase, and there's one staircase in the center, and there's one against the wall, and this dude's cell is in between these two staircases. So he's trying to walk this way, and as he's walking this way, he's got gang members coming this way, and gang members coming behind him. So now he has nowhere to go. He's like, I seen him at one point look over the rail and contemplate jumping, but you're going to break your legs if you jump from this height, right? So they tell him, nah, nah, we just need to talk to you. He should know there ain't no talking. Yo, we all just seen what y'all just did. We all just heard it. Y'all are covered in blood. Y'all are not here to talk. You know what I mean? Y'all, it's way too many of y'all. And y'all covered in blood talking about we need to go on the stage so y'all can talk. Hell no. Nah. What's the guard doing? She's busy up there sitting in the control booth. You got our pod. And if you go up to the booth, there's a little hole where you can talk through and you can look through. And then there's a pod on the other side of us where inmates can do the same thing. There's a big wall that separates us. So she's in control of two different pods, 100 and 200. What's she doing? She's busy down at the little chuck hole, flirting with the guy in the pod next to it. Hasn't looked up at what's going on in our pod now in several minutes. Had she, she would have seen bloody guys on the top tier with a guy trapped in the middle like a mousetrap. He's looking for anywhere to go. They just rush him, grab him, pull him, drag him, put him in a cell. Same thing. They shut the door and they just, it's the same thing. They beat this man, beat this man, beat this man. He tried to fight back a little bit, which is exactly what you should do in those situations. At least fight. Even if you're going to lose, fight. You think it's going to make it worse. It's not. The end result is still going to be whatever it's going to be. He tries to fight back, and they crush this dude in the cell, right? Bust him all up. So now both dudes that are involved have been jumped. They didn't stab them. They just put feet, fists, elbows, anything they could to hurt these dudes. Broke them up. Then they tell them, similar to the homeboys over there, black dudes laid out just like the white dude. Let them know y'all responsible for that money. You and him. Y'all going to come up with the money. Each and every week. I don't care if your grandma's got to send her SSI check to my house. I don't care what happens. Your people better make sure that money shows up. Now, the black dude was messed up. Beyond messed up. But he was not hurt as much as this white dude was. This white dude, I don't think he had probably ever been in a, a serious fight in his life. Next to little things here and there in jail and in prison. Much less had he ever sustained any type of injuries like this at all. He waits until the following day, goes out on the rec yard, waits till wreck is over. Like these guards don't pay a lot of attention. A lot of times you can slide right by them, your face be mangled, turn your head, drape a towel over your head like it's hot outside. However he did it, he made his way outside, got onto the rec yard. And then when wreck was over, he went to the guards and told them he got jumped by a bunch of guys in eight building. We live in seven building. The guards immediately, you know, shut the yard down, get everybody off the yard, get them in their cells. Now they're going over to eight building to search hands and feet and try to figure out who did this to the dude, right? Meanwhile, this black dude, he's just wearing it like a champ. He's flying below the radar. He's staying in the cell. I guess he's going to stay in there until he heals up, right? So they don't come in and lock us down. They lock us down momentarily until they come in and pack all the dude's stuff, stuff up and get him out. Then they let us back out. They go over to 8 building, lock 8 building down, and they're searching everybody because this dude is telling them some guys from 8 building jumped me. He protected the blood dudes that had done this to him. I'm in the cell with my cellmate, and I'm like, man, y'all, I ain't, you look, know, this ain't my business, but y'all went way too far. Like, you could have got your money, money just as easily by slapping the dude up, but y'all damn near killed them dudes, man. Like, it does, there's different ways to get things done. What's to say now they don't fear for their life and they're not just going to check in and disappear? He's like, well, we got to push the point that you can't rob us, you can't get over on us, right? I'm thinking, man, this can't be my life, man. This is crazy, man, just to, to be a part of this, to have to witness this. 
That evening we're sitting in the pod And there's a white dude walking through the pod And I'm sitting there on the bench Talking with my homeboys And he walks by me and I look at it And it's clear that he's high There's no denying that this dude has done dope If you've ever seen anybody high on heroin Or what they look like when they do heroin And you can spot it, you know what I mean You can see it in the way they walk Dude's got his sunglasses on in the middle of the evening, so nobody can see his eyes. He's all sluggish. He's carefree. He's just going about his business, right? And I see it, and I'm looking at him like, damn, I know other people can see this. I look around for my celly. My celly's standing on the top tier with two other blood dudes, and they're locked in on him, right? So they know now, wherever their dope went, he somehow has gotten some of it. So now what they need to do is either press him and find out where he got it from or just watch him the guys he hang out with they get high too so watch him watch his buddies and see who they go to deal with see where they're getting it from that's what they do they fall back they try not to click up in groups because it's obvious you know what's going on that something's going on there that many so they pull apart and go in their own directions my cellmate standing in the door and he's watching Dude, go talk to some of his homeboys. They're all high, been shooting hair and whatnot. He sees a dude go to the first guy I told you that, that was high cell. And the guy points him in the direction of where to go. When the white dude was standing in the hallway and he hit the dope, there was a dude standing in the hallway also named Blue. A black dude. Grimy ass dude. Dude from Tidewater. I'm not saying all Tidewater cats are grimy. This dude was from Tidewater, dude named Blue. And was super grimy. Was known to be grimy, right? Evidently, when they were standing in that hallway. And the white dude hid the pack. Blue looked over and saw him hide it. Blue kind of fell back. Let him go first. Let him go ahead and go through. And when nobody was looking. Blue slid over in the corner. Went in the Bama spot. Took the pack. And shoved it right up on up in there. Made his way back to the building with it. Didn't get discovered. This is a lot of dope. The way these things are packaged is they try to compact it as tight as possible and make it, you know, as small as possible with as much in it. So it'd be like the equivalent of something of about the size of a hot dog, a half a hot dog. But once you bust it open, it's like the equivalent of a pack of hot dogs just wrapped up really tight in this one, right? So they get to watch it and they see... Dude go over to Blue's cell, right? Blue done stole the pack and brung, brung the pack back. Blue done watched these bloods pretty much cripple and annihilate both these dudes in here that had something to do with it. I'm sitting out in the pod and I'm watching this whole thing unfold. Like I said, you ain't got to say a word. You ain't got to hear nothing. Just use your eyes, watch your surroundings, and you'll figure things out real quick. By now, my celly is... Went and talked to a couple of the other bloods. But instead of them all mobbing up, he's just making it seem like it's just another day. Like he just stopping by. Hey, what's up? Chopping it up with him, talking to him. When in reality, he's just taking a couple minutes to let them know, hey, Blue got the pack. Now, Blue ain't no slouch. Blue is grimy, but Blue is also a dangerous dude. Had a whole lot of time to do. Caught him a body out of tide water. Killed somebody with a pistol So Blue was going to be in prison for a very long time Blue should have known better Everybody in there knew Who them drugs belonged to For the most part Most of us knew What that white dude was going over to the visiting room and getting Most of us knew That the guy that cleaned over there What he was bringing back Who it belonged to Blue knew as well right But I told you there's some grimy grimy dudes in there And they just don't care that night we locked down, my celly tells me, you got anything in the cell? Because I tattooed, you know what I mean? I don't want to get jammed up with my tattoo equipment. He said, if you got anything in the cell, you might want to get it out of here. I already know what that means. It means we're getting ready to go on lock. These dudes are getting ready to do something that goes way past what happened with the other two dudes. Like I told y'all, Blue's one of them dudes that's going to, he's going to do a lot more fighting. He's going to do some stabbing if it comes to it. He knows that if he gets discovered, 
they figure out he's got the pack, what the repercussions are, they're going to try to kill him. Selly tells me, hey, look, Jay, I'll fuck with you. Go ahead and, you know, anything you got in here, get that shit up out of here because they're going to be coming. I said, well, what's going down, man? He was like, I ain't going to really get into it. I can't really talk much on, you know, the gang politics and shit. They be telling me little shit, but it's against policy for them to speak on, but so much, right? He said, I'm just going to tell you this. It's going down and, you know, you know, I know, the homies know, everybody knows that Blue's got the pack. So get your tattoo equipment, anything you got out of here, take it to where you need to take it to. But in the morning, everything's going to happen. I said, oh, shit, here we go again. Same old shit, dog, just a different day. That night, I get all my stuff out of my Bama spots, my little hiding spots. I package it all up. Next morning, I go over to the dude that holds my stuff for me when we go on lockdown. I said, look, I need you to hold this. What's going on? I said, look, just hold it, man. Or are we going on lock? And I just look at him. I said, hold the stuff, man. And if you don't want to hold it, find somebody to hold it. That's what I pay you for, right? We had just got a new white dude in the pod. Maybe two days, three days prior. I hate to stereotype people. But he looked like a guy that would get high. So the blood dudes go to another dude that's not blood related, doesn't have anything to do with them, and says, hey, do us a favor, man. Take this to the white dude and, you know, try to get some dope for us. What you mean get some dope for y'all, man? Y'all, Why y'all just get y'all's own dope? Just behind the shit that's got to do with the shit with blue. Yeah, it's the shit that's got to do with blue. But we can't go ask blue for dope because he's going to know what it is. We got to send somebody to him that... He wouldn't expect anything. And if he sees us go down and talk to the dude, and then the dude comes and talks to him, they're not going to mess with us. Dude was like, all right, man, I don't want no problems. Like, it's, they weren't asking this dude. They were telling him, you're going to take these items, this commissary, down to this new dude and tell him, hey, give me some dope. My credit's no good, and I'll split it with you. Sure enough, he goes down there to the new white dude, takes him a bunch of bags of coffee, all this stuff in the commissary bag, and says, Hey, go holler at the dude for me. I got bad credit. He won't give me nothing. See if he's got some dope. Get it from him and I'll split it with you. New white guy goes on over to Blue Cell. Hollers at the dude. I'm watching. I watch the dude leave Blue Cell. Go back to his cell. Get the commissary bag. And go down there. And get a commissary bag and stuff. The dude. Come out of his cell. Out of Blue Cell. Go back in his cell. Then the white dude goes down there. Gets the dope, breaks it in half with the dude he just sent over the blue cell. Comes back up, chills for maybe 30, 45 minutes nonchalantly. And then comes up and starts, you know, talking to my cellmate. My cellmate said, Jay, let me holler dude for me. And I said, all right. I peel out. He gives my cellmate some of this dope. These dudes are smart. Those bags of coffee and stuff they gave the dude to take down there, they marked them. Now they mob up. They mob up deep. And it was like every single blow we had in our pod mob up. They head over to Blue Cell. Now, you can't get but so many people in the cell. But Tidewater was deep at the time, too. So they didn't only have to worry about Blue. They had to worry about once they start doing this, what they're going to do to this dude. All these Tidewater dudes getting involved. <clears throat> so my celly goes in the cell. A bunch of dudes going to cell with him. And the first thing they do is they don't say a word to Blue. They start going through Blue's commissary. They're looking for these bags of coffee that they put marks on that are now in Blue's possession, almost like marked bills the police would give you. And the only way they could be in Blue's possession is if Blue was selling dope, right? They start straight. As soon as my celly starts going through the commissary, Blue knows what time it is. He takes off on my celly. They all get to rumbling. They're fighting in the cell. They got Blue pinned down on the bed because... You don't want to kill him. You don't want to knock him out because then how you going to find out where he's got the dope stashed at? They tell him, give us the dope, man. Where's the dope at? We know you got the dope. Give us the dope and this is all it is. We'll let it leave it as it is. I ain't got no dope. I, ain't, I got my dope for somebody else. You a lie. Where's the dope at? Tell us before we kill you. Blue tells him where the dope is. The dope is stuck to the bottom of the counter in saran wrap with a magnet on it. The counter's metal. It stuck it to the bottom of the counter and had bagged up a lot of it, but a lot of it was still whole in the other bag. They get the stuff, and then I start hearing the screaming. I see the blood dude step in front of the door, 
blocked the door and the tide water dudes are standing out in the pod and there's not many of them so they're not doing anything plus they're not getting wrapped up in what blue's got going on whether blue's life is in danger or not right the screams blue started letting out were a whole different scream the noises you were hearing were a whole different noise it wasn't a a scream of i'm being attacked or i'm being jumped it was a scream of oh my god i'm being stabbed help me they held blue down on the bed and just several of them commenced to stab him blue stab him blue stabbing him this takes place as blue's trying to fight and get up they've got him held down they're stabbing him in his sides stabbing him in his back stabbing him in his chest and then they roll out except this time they roll out the guard sees them she sees all the guys standing there. She sees all the Tidewater guys. She's done called for the people to come in. All these guards come running in. These dudes got knives on them. They're trying to get to the one dude gets over the trash can, drops a knife in the trash can, but he's got blood on him. And Blue's laid up in the cell fighting for his life. They have knocked him out. He's unresponsive. He's hemorrhaging and bleeding from everywhere. My celly beeline straight for our cell. I'm sitting out in the pot. I ain't going nowhere near that cell. I'm just watching all this shit unfold. These dudes are going in different directions, trying to get to where they can get these bloody clothes off of them as Blue lays in there dying, right? The guards come in and immediately take notes of who's going where, what was doing, what was going on. The guard in the control booth made notes of which inmates it was, who was in the cell, who was around the cell. They come in and they tear my cell to pieces. They call me over there. Strip me down, butt ball naked, search me. I'm like, man, what y'all doing, man? I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm, what's going on? I tried to play dumb to I even knew what was going on. Even though we all saw it, we all heard the screams and everything going on. They rush the nurses in. They get Blue up out of there. And Blue gets med flighted off to the hospital. They rush him out of there. Med flight is when the quickest way to get you into surgery is by helicopter, not by an ambulance, not by a police escort. They've got to get you there and get you there now or you're going to die, right? They lock my cellmate up and every one of those other dudes. The one blood dude got into his cell. He had the dope on him. He was the one that got caught with it. He ended up getting caught with the dope. So now that's possession with intent to distribute heroin. All of them got an attempted murder charge on the guy blue. And just like that, it was all over. That's beef. That's real beef. When guys are coming at you, trying to kill you, and there's nowhere to run. There's no one to call. Your mama can't help you. Your daddy can't help you. I remember that night, I was standing in my cell, and I'm just looking around at where my cellmate's stuff was. His bunk is empty. I'm like, all right, great. Now I'm going to get a new celly, right? I'm looking around because the whole entire pod is locked down. We stayed on lock for a while after this, right? They had the people come in, investigate, take pictures of the cell, take pictures of the blood that was everywhere. They locked Blue's cellmate up as well because of other stuff they found in the cell. Blue wasn't going to own up to it. They found other heroin paraphernalia in the cell. So they locked Blue's cellmate up, which had nothing to do with anything. All that could have been avoided had Blue... Kept his dumb ass out of prison. Had Blue not tried to be grimy and get one up on somebody and steal something that didn't belong to him. I remember when this was all going on, just having this feeling of just like helplessness. Of not having any control over my life. I remember as I watched everybody head in the direction of Blue's cell with their knives, knowing that. There's nothing this man can do to stop what they're about to do to him. Blue survived the stab wounds. Blue was in the hospital for a long time, collapsed lungs, and had to undergo so many different surgeries. Blue ended up being shipped to another prison because they couldn't put him back on the yard because they were afraid if they did that he would be killed. The guys would finish the job because they tried to kill him. They failed. Good-sized dude was able to... Some of these were ice picks he was getting hit with. Some were just straight shanks. Just, you know, an ice pick is exactly what it sounds like. It's an ice pick. It's a piece of broken fence. Then he was getting hit with knives. I heard rumors on how many times he was stabbed. But they were just rumors and I don't know it to be true. So I'll just leave it at that. 
that was one of those times in my bed where it really opened your eyes up to the things you do in life and the things you do to other people. How being sneaky is just what it sounds like. You're sneaking around doing something, but it always ends bad, man. It was a crazy, crazy time in my life. Please, y'all, stay out the lockup. Please don't ever find yourself in a situation where somebody's pressing you to do something that you don't want to do, but you do it because you feel like you can have something to gain. Don't ever put yourself in a position to where you think you're doing something that nobody will know. Everybody knows what happens in prison. Prison is like a big soap bar, but the cameras might not see it, but everybody else does. You don't never want to end up in that situation. I've been in some bad situations, but I've never been in a situation as bad as what Blue put himself in. Anyway, man, these, these jails, these prisons, detention centers, these institutions, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.